All right. Hey, welcome to the first edition of our new podcast called Leaves of Discovery. And I'm so excited about our guest here. She is Sunshine. And I'm going to let her take it from here. Sunshine, please bring us up to speed. Uh, absolutely. So my name is Sunshine, the pink haired psychic medium. Um, I'm a psychic medium. I'm a soul healer. I'm a spiritual advisor. I'm a high priestess. Um, you know, and it, you, we were just kind of chatting a little bit there before we started. Uh, you know, my purpose kind of in this world that I've re and I, I had no clue, no clue. Like, you know, it came knocking on my door is to really help people recognize and understand, you know, very, very much so aligned to kind of what you're trying to do that their journey, though, very, though, very different than the person standing next to them is ultimately the same, right? That we are all here to kind of explore our own gifts, what we're meant to do, our paths, our belief, and really all to align us to living the, the, these really wonderful, beautiful lives, right? And so um, uh, that that's, that's my purpose. Um, I have been <laughs> professionally in this space for over three years, um, and all of this was born... Uh, out of my recovery from alcoholism. And, Yay! Yeah. How yeah. long have you been sober? I, I, so I've been sober for over three years, October. Oh, you know, I, my memory, same thing, memory. I hear, I think it was the ninth. I think it was the ninth of October, 2019. So we're at about three and a half years now. I don't know how many days, but I do keep track on an app. And yeah, thank you. Um, it was a good, Good for you. And the fact that you went through that alcoholism and sobered up now allows you to channel that wisdom and help others through that same portal, correct? Yeah. You know, I, I think of it, I've come to realize, and I'm in the works, I, it's it's probably about a year away where, where I'll be on my five-year anniversary. I'll release kind of a book that looks at it, but um, it's, you know, my challenge, what was robbing me of my happiness, my joy was the alcoholism. But in actuality, we as human beings can become addicted to just about anything, right? And it can be the cause and the rob. So a lot of, you know, what I look at is not just like folks maybe recovering or going through the journey of recovering from alcoholism, but recovering from the things that were robbing them from the joys in life. So it can be, as I say, it can be drugs, alcohol, sex, chaos, violence, drama, shopping, food, sugar. It could be anything that folks are basically um, allowing, you know, through, you know, maybe consciously sometimes, most times unconsciously them to rob from that, that joy of witnessing, experiencing and living life. I, I'll tell you this, Matt, here, this is the example. I am walking out of the grocery store at like 10 to eight this morning and I'm like overwhelmed by this sense of like joy of just like living. And I just, I shopped and I went in there and I felt like, who does this? Who, who like finds themselves moved to tears because they just got to witness humanity, like shopping and buying groceries and like, but that is the level well, of, of, of like what I am trying to do in this world is real every right. moment that we have. Right. Is a and that, of joy. Is, that is that is a beautiful place to be. OK, mm -hmm. so I'm just going to elaborate a little bit on that, um, because it is when you're standing in a Walmart, the energy of the Walmart is going to remain the same. All that can change is your perception of that energy. So what mm -hmm. you just illustrated to perfection is that we can at any point in our lives through our own volition, choose to live in the frequencies of joy. That's oh yeah, we can. We can be sitting in a prison cell and have a shitty and grin on our face. So yep. it's all perspective and paradigm, and you're you're one hundred percent accurate. Now, in my world, like you listed off, whether it be food or licorice or sex or what be it, I'm also uh, sober. I've been sober for a decade, mm -hmm. and now looking back at that. I formed a small opinion that says, you know what? It almost seems like everything's just a frequency. If I eat a good meal, I'm in a frequency. If I drink alcohol, I'm in a frequency. If I have sex. So the whole thing seems to be a frequency. And of those frequencies, 
my biggest worst one was the fear. Oh, yeah. yeah. So I yeah. see you as a spiritual leader in a simple sense, just pulling people into the light. Oh, God. And I mean, be I, in this frequency. Am I correct? Yeah. You, you know, Matt, you say you didn't do a bunch of reading. My literal tagline is helping my clients out of the dark and into the light. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, right? Like, just two peas in a pod. Yeah, right? You know, it. so, and, and so much. I couldn't tell you. It, that has been validated, like, through things that I've read. And, and, you know, like, I'll get these, like, pokes. But it's, it is, I love that you touched on the choice, right? Because that is, you have to choose, Right. If you if you if and even by not choosing, you are making a choice. Right. And so, like, it is completely up to us. It's like, you know, some people throw their hands in the air. Free will. Like, no, it's all destined. Like, no, there might be destiny you know, if that's your belief and all of that. But you are still given the choice on how you experience it. Absolutely. And that's what people fail to recognize. That, and again, not to push into my agenda at all, but a big part of my agenda is human volition and understanding that, that says, wait a minute, uh, every, in my humble opinion, I believe my research says that every decision we make either takes us into closer to the darkness of the light. And so to take that a step further, the decisions we make can be divided in terms of did, was that decision for my benefit or for somebody else's? And the moment you put someone else before you, their oh. paradigm ahead of yours, you get swept into the light. Uh, so, yeah. So, you, you know, you that. know, I would actually counter some of that, right? Well, bring it. I love it. I, I, you know, I agree that if you do, like, you have the ability to choose love, right? And so if you are choosing love, but here is the challenge that I think people face, you know, and, and kind of based upon what you're saying, if you choose to, to put, you know, someone else's, yes, you, you can be stepping into the light. But if you are doing that at a detriment of your own self, that you are rem you are not loving yourself in the same moment. Right. right. So this is these are the rescue the, like the rescuers. These are the yeah. folks that are constantly people pleasing at their own detriment that are wondering why in the world am I suffering from fatigue and headaches and migraines? Why have I not felt joy or happiness? And it's like, mm, when was the when was the last time you actually put loving yourself above Agreed. pleasing someone else? Agreed. So along these lines, say, for example, my son is doing the dishes. OK, I go while you're doing the dishes, I want you to take a moment and experience the joy through giving, because if you're just doing the dishes and you're not reaping the joy, you're missing one of the benefits. So to, mm -hmm. to, to your point. Yes, there are some people that in their minds, they believe that it's not only about other people, they're not doing their fair share. Mm -hmm. They feel like even though they walk this planet like Jesus Christ, they're still not satisfied with themselves. Because right? they give with expectation. Exactly. Okay. Right. And that expectation they give should only be the joy. Yes. I 100%. 100%. Yes. Right? All if right. the expectation yep. is, is the altruistic feeling of giving, right? of like literally experiencing the joy. It's like anything I ever give. And I tell people like, oh, no, no. And I'm like, no, I never give without being able to, like, I'm not giving to overextend. I'm not giving to receive back. I, you know, I'm purely in the state of giving because I am capable of it. I am able to it, right? And that is, I receive the joy purely from giving, right? Like, right. absolutely, 100%. But a lot of people give with this understanding of like, well, if I give, that means that, I must be, oh, I must be to receive too. Right. And the part they're missing is they're failing to miss the reception. Mm -hmm. They don't understand that, 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 and, and it's, again, when you're conscious, you know, aware of consciousness like you are and you're intuitive like that, you can see these things. Now on a larger scale, again, the reason I was first introduced to this was the first book I ever read about near death experiences was, um, embraced by the light 
And in that book, she talked about looking back on planet Earth and she could see the energy. And there were these pockets of, of negative energy, massive negative energy. And those pockets were people who were depressed. Okay, so they uh, the energy, they were in such a dark place and feeling so, and it was a form of selfishness, truth be told. There's, God created this journey for them and they've had their fill with this thing. And so they're in this pocket. And as she looked down, all they had to do was a simple carry growth, not make it about them for one iota, not my plight. My life is my play. Son of a bitch. I'm blessed. I'm more blessed than the dude sitting in prison and positive energy would flow into their lives. So when I read that in her book, I'm like, Oh, I mean, obviously a million light bulbs go off because that's the first time I was introduced. Oh, gosh, to yeah. Yeah. So yeah. cool. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, I've always, before even I ventured, you know, got really heavy, because I've been on this path since I was, I mean, gosh, since I was born, I mean, really, yeah, well, we don't it's, realize. It's who you are? We, yeah, we don't realize it until we, like, wake up, right? Um, but even before, you know, deciding to, you know, stop drinking and all of that, I've, I've always been known as, like, an eternal optimist, and it's, like, that is an indication of, like, you know, people like, what, why, like, how are you? The, it's like, because I've just, I, there, there, I get nothing out of worry. I get nothing out of fret. I get nothing out of anger. I like, all it does is keep me in low vibration. Right. So I always choose to see the opportunity and the positive and like in the shittiest, like even, even hardship, right. I've come to realize and accept when I'm, I'm struggling emotionally with something that's hard and difficult because it still happens. Right. You know, um, having to, I, I, over a year ago, I broke up with a partner of five years who just was choosing to not take care of themselves, their mental health anymore. That was hard. Right. It, it was sad. I, there was grief I had to go through and I still knew and understood that the, that grief and that pain that I experienced as a human had its purpose. It was meant to be there to heal me, right? Mm -hmm. It was meant to be there as part of my journey as like a, as a, like, look at what you've learned, right? You, you're chosen to love yourself. Like, and, mm -hmm. and part of this grieving process includes this pain, right? And that's okay. Mm -hmm. And so like, even, you know, people, you say the gentleman, I, I find it, um, I don't know if you're, are you familiar with Damien Eccles at all? No. His story? No, bring, um, bring me up to speed. Yeah. So Damien Eccles, he's got, he's a, he's an author now. He's a very um, powerful magician. Um, you may have heard of him. Uh, I forget. I think it's like the West Memphis three is the story. So okay. him and two of his friends at the age of like 17 or something of that nature, uh, like maybe they were like 15, 16, 17 were convicted of murdering little boys. And it was a false conviction. And he was on okay. sat on death row for 10 years. And ha and use the power of magic and this and this like high vibrational frequency to 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 basically get his name cleared. I mean, not cleared. He had to yeah. accept a plea and and was released from prison accordingly. But like, it is absolutely possible if you are in the shittiest of situations mm -hmm. to truly step into that frequency, that vibration. And it it doesn't doesn't mean it happens overnight. Right. But you have to be willing to continue to choose day after day, hour after hour, minute after minute. Right. Let's go. Let's go down the the, the 12 step path. Right. right, right? right, right you right. have to you have to continue to choose in each and every moment that you live to believe in the high vibrational frequency, in the joy, in the happiness. Right. In right. In, in that. Um, and it's possible even to be in the, those moments and still, you know, because he, if you read his story, I mean, his, his, he talks about it a lot. I mean, he was beaten. Well, and, well, and too, there's, there's like zero reason not to believe him. And uh, uh, the bottom line is what he's suggesting has been proven countless times. It's just people aren't aware of it. So can I run a quick theory by you and see what you yeah, think? Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Okay. Quick theory says this, that, uh, there are two types of energy, spiritual and physical. Okay, spiritual energy is your thought process. That was alive before you were human, and it cannot be extinguished. 
Okay, just in theory. And again, support, you know, NDEs and what be it. Okay, so uh, spiritual energy. Yep, been here before you were this beautiful little human being and it will never extinguish. Physical energy. Okay, that's our universe. What we see as solids can be brought together anywhere with simple gravity and matter. Okay, and Einstein has proven that if you go down to the molecular, or I'm sorry, down to the uh, 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 quark, quantum, quantum, yeah. down to the quantum level, it's nothing but space and energy. You know, we only yeah. see it as a solid because of our relative size to it. So you got this conscious soul that was alive. So it's going to come down to the planet into this energy for one purpose or another. I'm going to speculate that that purpose was difficulty because we don't have difficulty in the light. So we said, hey, I'll go down there and take a few punches. Okay. But once we're human, we can't remember that. So now we can't figure out why we're taking the punches. Now, a lot of us will come to our deathbed and look back and go, shit, I signed up for it. And all I did was bitch. Okay. Again, it's just the theory. Now, with that said, back to consciousness and decision-making. From my perspective, our spiritual energy is floating through trillions of frequencies from love to the greatest of fears. And through our volition, we're shifting those frequencies in this energy. So you went into Walmart. Up in the just, again, I live in a world where if I'm above the ground and breathing and I still get to fight the fight, that's as good as it gets. That's why I'm here. So you can see you and I agree, and this isn't anything innovative. We've fallen into a tank of truth. Yeah. It's obvious. Yeah. That's yeah. why we're here. Stop letting the religion scare the shit out of you. Yeah. I, I, I'm chuckling because I so I. I have a couple of like long term clients that I would say I'm helping them like we're hands on. And so the most common question that I'll I'll get in the beginning and they hate my answer. They're like, what is the meaning of life? What's the purpose of life? And I'm like, do you are, are you are, do you really want to know? I said, because I've asked like I've gone deep. I, I've asked and they're like, yeah, what is it? And I'm like. It's to live. And they're like, what? And I was like, it's to live. I mean, that is the purpose. It's to live, to experience, to witness it all, right? To like get into it, to be in it. Like to your point, 100%. Like I've looked into past life. I, I've opened and explored what's referred to as the Akashic records of many, many souls. And so right. they come and they make the choice. Right. 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 They make the choice. Yeah, they step absolutely. into it to learn and to do whatever fight that mm -hmm. they need to do. And yes, Yes, there is. Like, if you want to add the second purpose of life, the second purpose, when we are on these spiritual journeys, it's actually to get to the point of enlightenment that we actually wake ourselves up. Our consciousness now just is, is so woke and connected to the collective that we are aligned to our spiritual, our spiritual body. We are aware of it so that once we reach the point of enlightenment, the next lifetime, we remember. Uh-huh. We mm -hmm. do remember. We okay. remember everything that we've been through. So like, and, and they typically in the, in the spirit, that is the point of, of a, an ascended master. So Jesus Christ, St. Germain, Buddha, Muhammad, all of these ascended masters that are recognized are the belief is that they have, they have gone through their spiritual journey to the point of enlightenment that now they remember all of the lessons that they have learned. And so your first purpose is to live life your second purpose is to live it to the point that you 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 experience your connection to your conscious higher self and now remember every lifetime moving forward. I love it. So would that be construed if they can get if we can get where you are, would that be construed as heaven on earth? I will tell you a hundred percent day in and day out, heaven on earth. I, even though I may witness, I still like the joy and the love that I have for living at this point in my life. I don't, I don't know how any, it could be any better. I mean, I, I, I would not, I would not negate. I would say like, I want to experience the pain and the, why don't we watch scary movies? I know. Right? So look at this. So, yeah. So what you're explaining perfectly is contentment with life on life's terms. And yes, oh, yeah. it's a perception thing. And the moment you perceive that says, 
I love everything about it, then yes, everything else is a blessing, even the punches. Yes. Yeah. So you, you're, you're such a beautiful inspiration. So now again, what matters most is people can find the portal we're describing. Mm-hmm. Okay. And that they portal sure comes through you. That portal comes through you, right? So it's really no different than a church in this regard that says all human beings are looking for a foundation. And Mm -hmm. in that foundation, it typically means like-minded, conscious souls that see the world along the same lines. But what's most important in that is that we all gravitate to what we need, and that is love. Starts with unconditional love. Now, from that portal, from you, they come into you, they learn, and you send them on their way. But we got to have a portal to come in and be reaffirmed, correct? Yeah, I, I I refer to it like the number one thing that people come to me for is validation. They already have the answers. They already feel it. They already have the tingles. The spider sense is already going on. They're experiencing the symptoms of of like of of that like a. Uh, I don't even know the pic. My my strongest psychic ability is clairvoyance. So they're painting this picture of me of like they can feel the desire for that higher frequency, mm-hmm. but they keep like their their humanness. There's something around them that keeps like pushing it down. Like nope, nope, right? Well, you, you know what's around them? For you, around, the, for you, you know what's the, around them? That's I'm sorry, sweetheart. I told oh, no, no, smoke over that. You're good. For I, I was gonna say for you, it was the fear. The fears that you were facing in the beginning, like recognizing that was your, what was keeping your vibration down. Right. 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 Every individual though has something. And so right. when they come yeah. to me, that's what we talk about. That's what we explore. And I help to validate the right path that they know, they know they're feeling it, but they just don't have the confidence yet to step into it. Right. And the thing is, is you're right. Validation. Okay, but now, in addition to that validation, though, you also come with a lot of wisdom by which some people have not heard. It's second nature for you, but trust me, the portal that you describe, the conversation we're having, this is the world I live in, too. But trust me, most people don't. And now there's a bigger reason for that, and that is this world's a shit show. I mean, there are forces in this world that do not want enlightenment. They don't want truth. They don't want freedom. They don't want peace. So there is that part fighting on these people who are trying to find the wisdom through you. They've got a a road of hope. (laughs) Matt, um, yeah, so I last year pretty much stepped out. My business is still in social media, but I pretty much stepped completely personally out of social media. And The reason why, and I described this to someone, is if I was, you know, quote unquote, an evil person hanging out in the universe, like on Mm -hmm. Earth right now, Mm -hmm. I would create social media to distract people, to give them false messages, to like polarize them. I I mean, what an, an amazingly little evil little tool out there, right? Like I would do it. So I personally, to your point, we were talking, you kind of mentioned like, we want to gravitate towards folks that are like-minded. And I'll tell you, those folks that are enlightened, that are beating their own drum to their own, you know, like their own beat, they're not on social media because they know, they know of what, you know, they they know of how distracting so much of that is. They're finding the people to follow, the, you know, the mats with the podcast, the sunshines with the message. They're finding their tribes to listen to. And to be in that that collective, you know, like-minded yeah. community. Um, so cause... if I have my goal, okay, again, my whole project is to suggest that, listen, social media, we've got a planet here and above, we've got a planet filled with human disagreement. And mm-hmm. so the podcast is above human disagreement. You got it. There's a bunch of us that see this wisdom, but somehow we have to raise the conversation up above the fray. Hey, we love agree to disagree, fight it out, slug it out. But above here, we're going to take a step forward and we're going to get out of the fight and just start talking about what's right. So this is where I'm going to try to handcuff myself to you. 
because when I go out and bring them to my portal, you are the piece that I'm mm -hmm. telling them I have. Oh, I love it. I can prove it to you. I'm saying you come to this portal, bring it in here. I'm going to put you in Sunshine's lap, and I promise you, you'll be able to come back to this portal, and Sunshine will affirm. Oh. Was that the word you used? They come for affirmation? They they come for validation. Right? validation they come for validation. Yeah, validation. They, they absolutely do. No, okay, I'm not, you know. Well, go, go ahead. ahead. Uh, yeah, so did not mean to interrupt. I'm new at this. But tell the listeners, how can they get in touch? Can, uh, what absolutely. would you like them to do? The number one, you can check me out online on the website, www.sunshinereadings.com. You'll see me. There's a couple of other folks, too, because I am not the only individual that is out here, right, leveraging our gifts to help folks find and explore their own paths, right, to, to step into the light. I'm not the only one. So you'll see that there are a couple other folks that are out there working underneath my name, which is, like, spectacular, um, so the website is the very first place. You can find us online. Like I said, I don't hang out there, but my team does make sure we're communicating in those channels. So we've got a Facebook page, Sunshine Readings Online, Instagram, Sunshine underscore readings. You can find me on Pinterest. Um, we are getting stuff up on YouTube as well. Sunshine Reading is going to be the number one place that you go. But if you start on the website, you can find us there. Um, I've got a couple of really great, you know, sometimes it can be, you know, when you work with someone one-on-one, -on -one, it can be pricey. I make sure that we are accessible to folks that may even be in a position where their dollars are a little bit tight because I don't want that to be a barrier, right? But come, anybody that's interested, find us. There's a lot of great information, things that we share that are absolutely at no cost. Um, but if you ever want to work one-on-one -on -one or even strengthen your own psychic gifts, you can take a look there. Um, but I love this work. I, like I said, I never, you would have, Matt, you, we would have rewound me to before I decided to stop drinking. And you asked me like, would I be doing this? No, never. Oh. No way. Mm -hmm. I still have times my guides are like, you need to do that. And I'm like, oh, please don't make me do that. <laughs> I, I absolutely I love it, Sunshine. And what a better name for a portal into unconditional love than Sunshine. Mm -hmm. All right, beautiful. Like I'm going to let you go. I'm going to let you go. Okay. And for so. the listeners, again, if you want to look into my project, the website is selfishtruth.com. I know the word selfish can be derogatory, but I'm telling you, that type of conversation can lead to the sunshine and joy of unconditional love. I love you, sunshine. Thank you for taking the time. Thank you, Matt. All right. Bye-bye.